Ms. Lewis Kane? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. So again, if you're scribe of, you're working out on the scribe. Okay. This is the sprite is equal to is equal to three, three over four. The cost per transaction, which we said is equal to fifty dollars, we multiply by the variance, which is the measure of volatility, uh, which is how much? Well, I don't know the question. Let me go back. Let me get the question. This is yeah. It is. Okay. Uh, multiply by the variance. So yeah, okay, let me just the formula is where is the formula? Yes, it's equal to the three and three uh, three three quarter. Okay, times a variance. Okay, times the cost per transaction, which is fifty dollars. The variance of cash flow. We've been given that the standard deviation is two thousand. No, get it. We need to use the variance. Now, how do you get the variance from standard deviation? How do you get the variance from standard deviation? Uh, you square it. You square it. Okay. Therefore, two thousand squared. Okay, two thousand square. Okay, we divide by the interest. And the interest must be daily, must be daily interest because the standard deviation is daily standard deviation. And the daily interest you told is equal to 0 0.025, it is in percent, therefore we divide by 100 to the power of a third. And Brian, what do you get? Just you apply this formula to your calculator. What do you get? Just a minute. Uh... Twenty-five three oh three. Yes, and you get twenty-five three or three. Be, uh, okay, twenty-five three or three. I think Sarah got that. Okay, twenty-five three or three. Nafisa, what do you have? I got twelve thousand one hundred and sixty-five. Well, even after applying the formula. Yeah. Well, okay now. Okay, maybe I'm, I don't know what the, where, where your mistake is. Okay, but don't forget you need to first get, get first get the cube root. Okay, before you multiply by three, this need to come. This need to come first. You first need to get the cube root before you multiply. Have you done that? Oh, I did the opposite. Okay. No, you need first to get the cube root, then you multiply by three. Do you see what you have? After applying the formula. For the spread. Mm, the spread, yes. 25, 303. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, Sahina, you okay? Sakina. No, I get different answers. What are you getting? 36, 493. Wow. Okay. What are you doing? Take us through what you, you did feed it to the calculator. So, 0 0.75 times 50? Yes. Times 2,000 mm -hmm. to the power of 2? Yes. Divided by? Mm -hmm. In brackets? Mm -hmm. 0 .0, yeah, in brackets, 0 0.025 divided mm -hmm. by 100. Close the brackets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. Bracket again, the power of a third. Yeah. The power should be in bracket also. The power should also be in bracket. Yeah. 
Okay, what do you get? I'm getting 8,434.33. Times three. Okay, yeah. I got it. I'm getting 5303, okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Brian, you have the same? Yes, I was. I, I didn't divide the interest rate by 100. Oh, okay, you have to, you have to read by 100, okay. Fair enough, okay, so you get 2503 to be the spread, okay, 2503 to be the spread. And of course, once you get the spread, then it becomes very easy to do the others, okay? Return point, for instance, for this example, Return point for this example will be equal to the lower limit, which we told is equal to as per the question. Uh, the lower limit is equal to this is it is equal to eight thousand. Therefore, eight thousand plus the a third of spread, a third of spread, which is twenty five three or three. When you get sixteen, is that the impulse? Sorry, the impulse sixteen what? Sixteen something. Sixteen four thirty four point three. And that four point three can therefore the sort of point. Okay, then the upper limit, the maximum cash the company should be holding at any point That's in time. 434. 434. Yeah. Okay, 434. Okay. 434.3. Yeah. The upper limit should be equal to the lower limit, 8,000, plus the spread, which is 25,303. Give us that 303. Yeah. Give us that 303 to therefore to be the upper limit. Okay. Now, if I was to do the graph here, maybe it's just a simple graph, okay, for what is happening here. Lower limit here is 8,000. Return point 16, 434. Upper limit is 33, 303. Okay. So the idea is that the cash should not go above the upper limit, so it should not be above the 303. So at any point in time during the day, so this is days. Okay. This is days. The cash should never go above that three, three or three. Okay, the cash should never go. But if that happened, then of course we need to uh, reduce it back to the return point. That is sixteen. Uh, this is sixteen. Not this is sixteen. So no, uh, back to sixteen for that four. Uh, if the cash balance really approaches the lower limit, okay, that is eight thousand. Then we need to boost it back to its upper limit, which is sixteen for that four. Okay, this is what we have been doing here. There's a question you examine us from this area, which I think we can do it. Okay. The only question I've seen so far. Okay. Me, yes, yes. Uh, how will you show the spread in the graph? In the graph, you, you don't need to show in the graph, but anyway, this is spread. You don't need to show the graph, but this is a spread. The difference between the upper limit and the lower limit, which is 25303. Okay. 25303. Okay. But now, but you don't need to show it, okay? But it's just about explaining how to apply the model, okay? The graph is just where we understand what is happening, okay? <clears throat> so the question the examiner wants us you to, okay, to do, so let me get it. That's the only question I've seen so far, by the way, okay? Yes, here it is, okay? Uh, as per my question bank, it's in page that six, that five, that six, uh, Wobnik company that five or six a company called uh, Wobnik company. Okay, so go for it and tell me. Pay that five or six a company called Wobnik company. Uh, part C of the question. Part C of the question. Nafisa, you take us through, but first read. it. Okay, so you have a limit. Yes. Okay, so upper limit, let me just write it down. So upper limit is how much? 25,000. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my return point is 225,000. Return point 225. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what you meant to do. Okay, that's the first yes. part. Explain how this is going to uh, assist you in managing the cash balances. But sir, uh, okay, for this I got confused. Like, how are we supposed to know where our cash management is at the point? Mm -hmm. No, you're meant to explain these points. How you're meant to explain them? How does this help you? And now, how does this help you to get to know the cash bar to manage cash? 
Oh, so we just have to explain that the cash management is not supposed to go above 275,000. Okay, so then, okay, text rate was, okay? Okay, yes, that's what we meant to, okay, explain. Uh, okay, so our cash management is not supposed to go above 275,000. Mm -hmm. And it's also not supposed to go below 200,000. Okay. And uh, the... Okay, and, 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 and? I think that's it. There's, there's still one mark that you have not yet got it. Okay, but it's good whatever you're taking through. Okay, there's a mark which you need to mention. Uh, okay, Daisy, take us through. Hold on just a minute. Yeah, this was happening. Sanya, take us through. Not to know what happened to Daisy. Um, okay, so um for the return point. Mm -hmm. Um, your cash uh, exceeds the two twenty five thousand. Mm. Um, you should probably sell. So I mean, um, yeah, sell the sell the securities to bring it back to the return point. Mm -hmm. You want to bring yeah. it back, so it's above yeah. it's above the return point. Yeah, above the return point. If it's lower than the re return point, then you probably like invest in something so that you can bring the cash back to 225. 225. Yeah. Uh, whatever you say is going to make it worse. Because if, for instance, okay. we are, if, let me draw the graph, okay? And just to help okay. you to understand uh, the concept here. Okay, so let me just use this graph, which we did uh, use for the previous example. Okay. So, sorry. Upper limit here yeah, was 225, 275,000 upper limit. The uh, return point is 225, the lower limit is 200,000, 20,000. If now the cash is at, assume that the cash is at 275, okay, the upper limit, we need to reduce it back to 225,000, isn't it? Yeah. So I want to make it okay, 225,000. So what do we do? We use the cash to, to, to back to 225,000. Do we sell or do we buy? We buy. We buy, yes, not sell. We'll sell oh, I said the opposite. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Opposite. Yes. Yeah, I said the cash. opposite. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You need to reduce the cash balance from 275,000 back to 225,000. You need to buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is yeah. buying money, market, instrument. Simply, you need to buy the marketable securities to bring the cash back to 225,000. What, how much? 50,000, okay, worth 50,000, okay? So we need to buy securities, okay? Uh, we need to buy money market uh, instrument or market securities to bring the cash from 25,000 back to 225,000. If the cash balance is at, two, uh, is at 200,000, okay? What do we need to do? We need to sell. In this case, we need to make a sale, okay? Sale of market securities to bring the cash from 200,000 back to 225,000. What should be the sale? What should be the worth of the, uh, the security you're selling? Should be the difference, which is twenty five thousand. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Nafisa, Nafisa, Nafisa is clear. Uh, sir, I have a question. Yes, uh, Like, even if we are at our return point, mm -hmm. if it goes a little bit above or below, we are still in between the. Yeah. At that point, maybe you may not want to. Okay. Is because you want to also, uh, you know, you may not want to act. Okay, the the call for action is going to be uh, uh, is going to be imminent if you're going to have the cash at two thousand five thousand. If it's not, if it's different, for instance, is at two thousand five thousand, unless it's two fifty thousand here, then you may not want to act because it's not yet above. The risk is not that high. The loss profit is not that high. Okay, so you may want to avoid acting. Okay, in that in that situation. Okay, so the last point that Tanya said, we, ha we are supposed to write it. The second last point, the last point, uh, she confused. She uh, made some error. Yeah, yeah, I did after the confusion. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the first statement was quite, quite correct. Okay? It's quite correct. Okay. That you want to reduce the cash balance, you need to uh, reduce. Uh, if, for instance, you're at this point in time here, upper limit, reduce the cash balance back to 250 to 25,000. By doing what? By buying the marketable security worth 50,000. If the cash balance is at 200,000, they need to boost the cash balance back to 225,000, the return point. By doing what? By selling off your previous investment, you made worth to uh, worth 25,000. Okay. Okay, any question? Okay, and that is on cash management. Okay, that's on cash management. Okay, that's how you manage cash through the use of uh, the uh, cash flow focus. Okay, uh, uh, through the use of the Baumol model and the, through the use of uh, the Nila or model. Question? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, could you please explain return point? Return point is what we call target. Is a, the other term we use is for the target cash balance. It's called the target cash balance. It's where the company aim to have its cash at. Okay, it's where the company aim to have its cash balance at. Okay, uh, for the target cash balance. Okay, so if the company cash is at upper limit, we need to reduce it back to the target, the return point. Okay, if at lower okay. limit, we need to boost it back to the target cash balance or the return point. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. 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 Any other question? Okay. Yeah, so yes. can we say that the target point is the optimal level? It's like the optimal level, yes. We don't call it the optimal, but it's like the optimal, yes. In theory, it's like the optimal, yes. Okay, okay, okay. yeah. Okay, so that's on the use of those two models and the use of the cash flow focus in cash management, okay. I have not seen so many questions from these two models, okay? But in a, I have not seen so many questions from this model. Mm. Let's see if I can go to get another question, but hurry it out. But let's see. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah, sure. where, where is the model not in the book? It's not in the book. No, it's not in the BPP textbook. Are you on the cash management model? Am I on the? Be on the cash management. Which copy are you, are you going through? Uh, 2019 copy. Sure. No, it isn't. Okay. Page 131. Page 131. That's what Brian is saying. OK, thank you. You've seen it. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay. So I don't think there are many questions asked for this area. Okay, I don't think there's another question that I've seen so far has from this area. Okay. But it's just to get prepared that maybe you never know. You may be the first person to be asked to uh, uh, do that question on the use of the bar mall as well as the use of the mill on board. I think that's the only question I've seen so far from those two areas. Okay. Any other question? Because I don't think there's any question that will be replied. Let me try to do a search here. Maybe I may miss it. Maybe it will be missing bomb wall, which I highly doubt. Ah, okay, here there is one. Ah, here there is one question here. I think the only question here, which I think we can do. This is page, uh, page 62, page 62, uh, question 15. 61, 62, question 15. Hmm, yeah. I have not seen this question. Anyway, here. Yeah. Okay, so go through it. We just we discuss together. Page 162, okay, question 15.
Daisy, what do you have? I just found the question. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Brian, what do you have? Just a minute, just a minute. Sanya, you done something? So I got C. Mm, Sanya got C. Okay, that's for Sanya. Sakina? I got B. Sakina got B. Okay. Mm. Nafisa? I got B. Nafisa got B. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anita? I got B as well. You got B, okay. Anita? Okay. Daisy? I got B. Okay, fair right enough. Let's see where yeah, the B is the correct answer. So here we look at a company. So we say first you get a Q, okay. <clears throat> Motor of investment convert to cash. So Q is equal to given two annual demand cost per transaction. We divide by uh, the holding cost of cash. Okay, the annual holding cost of cash. Two. <clears throat> is it equal to annual demand is two, is equal to one six one fifty thousand one fifty thousand. Okay, uh, then cost per transaction is four hundred dollars. We divide by the holding cost of cash, okay? Don't forget, in case you have cash, it means that in cash deposits, you earn 1%. If you don't, if you do invest, okay, uh, you gain, if you don't invest, then you'll be losing a 5%. There was the net cost of not of holding cash. 4 5%. Four 4%, it's 4, 4%, 4%. Yeah. 4%. But in case you have them in cash, how much do you earn? You earn 1%. So in cash, you earn 1%, okay? In investment, you earn 5%. So what's the net cost of not investing? It's 4%, five minus one. Is that clear? Then I don't understand. If you don't invest, how much do you earn? Nafisa? Yes? If you don't invest, how much do you earn? 1%. 1%. If you invest, how much do you earn? Five percent. So there was a net cost of not investing. What? Mm, Nafisa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you get? What do you mean by that? Sorry? What do you mean by net? Here, there are two options. Either you invest the cash in here, they see it's here it is given. Let me, let me just highlight it in okay, case so that becomes clear. If you invest the money, these short-term investments, you can see where my my, my highlighter is, pays an interest of five percent. So if you don't invest the money, how much do you lose? Five percent. You don't it goes five percent, isn't it? Yeah. That's if I don't invest. If you don't invest, is it five percent, isn't it? Yeah. If you invest, how much do you earn? If you uh, you have to hold cash. In cash form, how much do you earn? One percent. One percent, isn't it? Yes. So what's the net cost of not investing? You did not invest, you had money in cash form. You could have, you could have earned five percent, but since you never invest, you earn one percent. So what's, how, how much money have you lost? What's the, what's the index you have lost? It's four percent. Oh. Yeah, four percent. Four percent is the net, is the net cost of holding of not uh, investing. Therefore, this is four percent, zero point. So the one percent is already like earned. Yes, a one percent is the amount you earn for having cash in cash form. Okay, this cash deposit here they are calling cash deposits. Okay, but if you invest, you'll be earning an extra four percent, isn't it? Oh, okay. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so therefore the cost of holding cash is 4%, okay, 0 0.04. When you get how much? Yeah. 
Fifty-four, seven, seven, two. Okay, and that's why therefore you have to be careful. As you can see, if you do the wrong thing, there's an answer for that. Okay, so you have to be quite careful. Okay. Anyway, so that's on the how to manage cash on cash management. That's on cash management. Okay. Any question? Okay, no question. Then great, we can meet at 2.15 uh, for our second class. Okay, then see you then. We uh, finish up on uh, working capital management.